Just one hour and 20 minutes from London by train is a beautiful historic English city nestled in the midst of the Somerset region. You might know this place for its famed Roman built baths that the city is named after, but there is so much more to explore here. From grand Georgian architecture to an incredible modern food scene and of course excellent independent craft and vintage shops. Hi friends, welcome to Bath, England. Ryan and I are spending the next two nights here. We're going to be exploring all the historical sites, eating all the food, of course, and just kind of having a bit of a cosy winter weekend getaway from London. We actually arrived a couple of hours ago. We caught an earliest train from Paddington Station, and I think it was only about, uh, about an hour and 20 minutes. So really easy if you just wanted to even do an overnight trip or a day trip. And the reason I wanted to arrive in Bath early is a very just reason, and that's because I wanted to try a bakery that is going to be closed the rest of the time we're here. And the bakery is called Landris Bakery and when I tell you they have one of the best cinnamon buns I've ever had I'm not kidding I'm not exaggerating it is on par with the cinnamon bun that I had in Copenhagen from Juno the Bakery and that is my favorite cinnamon bun of all time so that's really saying something so if you do one thing in Bath make sure you go to Landris Bakery and just try all of their treats they also have really good coffee too now that we have that very important matter off the list let's get out there and explore the rest of Bath Guys, nobody told me just how good Bath's vintage shopping is. We spent this dreary afternoon pottering around the stores, continuing Ryan's never-ending search for the perfect second-hand leather jacket. We then wandered through the indoor Guildhall market and then spent way too long in this magazine store that sells curated art, design and food magazines. And for dinner we headed to Bath Cider House where they stock local ciders from around the Somerset region and even brew some of their own on site. This blueberry one was a showstopper but to be honest the gigantic square pizza that arrived a few minutes later completely stole the show, I mean talk about extravagant. It is day two in Bath. We are up nice and early to go and actually see the said baths that the city of Bath was named after. But first, a very important mission, as always, coffee. Coffee is secured and also it is so quiet out here. There's like nobody out. So if you want to come for a nice like wee little quiet wander around Bath, 9am uh, on a Sunday is definitely the time to do it. I will be honest, I'm always a little bit skeptical about these historical activities in the UK, mainly because they are quite expensive, so you always want to be sure that you are getting your money's worth, but I have to say, the Roman baths, they really surprised me. You get to see the famous baths, which are quite magnificent, and in the summer, I believe they actually do a twilight entrance, which would just be so magical. But what I didn't realize is that there is also a whole underground museum as part of the complex, and as a bonus, you actually get a really good audio guide for free. If you visit on a Sunday morning, you get to hear the bells from the abbey chiming away, and although I didn't know it at the time, we would actually get to see these bells up close the next day. Tickets for the Roman baths can be booked online, and you get discounts for off-season and weekday times, so that is good to keep in mind. All of that history worked up an appetite so we made our way to a cafe that I had spotted yesterday and let's just say this loaded French toast and a maple syrup latte, it definitely hit the spot. We just come back from a nice blustery walk around Bath this morning. After breakfast we had a little wander around and then went to one of the like most recommended bookstores here. It is called Topping and Topping and Company booksellers and they actually they also have a shop in Edinburgh which is good to know but such a good bookstore so much to explore I think they had like three or four different levels so lots of choice whether you're into like graphic novels or food or literature or fictional non-fiction so much choice there so we spent a good wee while exploring I found a book in their travel writers section which is on first-hand accounts from female explorers and one of my goals this year is to read a lot more like travel and food literature and make sure I'm trying to get more information outside of the internet too so excited to kickstart it with that book. We're just gonna have a little bit of a chill, read our books and then we're off to do a very British Sunday cold weather activity which is a Sunday roast in a pub but I don't think this is in a pub, this is in a restaurant, apparently one of Bath's like, best restaurants, so I'm very excited for that. Let's fast forward to the food. 
On our way to lunch, we took a detour around the Circus and the Royal Crescent. These are two beautiful areas known for their Georgian style townhouses that were constructed in the 1700s. These days they retail for a cool £500,000 for an apartment for just two bedrooms, which actually as a Londoner maybe seems like kind of a good deal to me. Anyway, at this point I was in an unprovoked battle with the wind, which ended up winning out, so onwards to lunch. This is Beckford Canteen, a cosy local favourite set in a former Georgian greenhouse of all things. They specialise in modern British dining with a focus on sourcing ingredients from the surrounding region. I mean, just look at the spread, Ryan said it might be one of the best roasts he's ever had and I would say that is a fair assessment. And how is this for a closing act? An apple stuffed Yorkshire pudding with cinnamon ice cream? Just perfection. It's our last morning here in Bath and the sun has made an appearance with a little bit of blue sky so let's see if that decides to hang around. Our plans for today, number one of course we're going to go find some breakfast, number two stroll around a couple of areas of Bath that we haven't been to yet just on the other side and lastly we're going to go have a look at the Abbey or the Cathedral and I think we might be able to climb up to the top of that so crossing fingers that is an option. Let's go and do it. And it's literally just started raining, this is the most English weather ever. Yeah. One way to certainly make up for the rain was heading straight to Green Street Butchers. They are a little takeaway spot that do the most amazing fresh chicken rolls, but they have also started doing these sausage and egg muffins, and this is definitely the best way to start the day. And just around the corner, we grabbed a coffee from Society Cafe, meandering through the streets and shops, and yes, the sun decided to make an appearance again. If you have been to any of these quaint British towns, you have definitely seen these fudge shops before, and the one in Bath is actually their original store. Absolutely worth a stop if you are a sweet tooth like me, or if you just want to massively zen out watching them make the fudge. With all of this energy, I thought it is high time that we make good on the promise of climbing up the towers of Bath Abbey, and that is exactly what we did next. It is about £15 for this tour, and as someone who is not a history buff, I absolutely loved it. Our guide was so engaging and that really makes the world of difference. You also get to explore all of the nooks and crannies of the Abbey, from inside the clock tower to the bell tower where you even get your own show of the bells. And of course the incredible but very windy views over the city from the rooftop. And that very sadly brings our bath vlog to a close. If you enjoyed this, make sure to hit subscribe. I'm planning to do a lot more videos that are like day and weekend trips from London this year. So stick around for that and I will see you in the next video. Bye.